Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing slash reviewing the new Apple TV Plus TV show Foundation and comparing it to Foundation the book by Isaac Asimov. There's quite a lot to dig into already even though only two episodes have aired so far. So let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about is set design because I think that's one of the strongest points of the TV show is its visual aspect and I, I really like how they've shot it with the cinematography and with how everything looks like the the city of Trantor does look really quite spectacular. One thing that owes to that sort of epicness is the the retro-futuristic sort of 1930s deco style, which I guess in, in some ways could be a nod to the fact that Asimov was writing in the 40s, and so really his imagination probably would have been fired up by the sort of buildings that he would see around him like for example I think he grew up in Brooklyn so he would be very aware of the Empire State Building like when was that built the beginning of the 1930s so he would have been a child looking at this magnificent building suddenly come in well, it didn't suddenly happen because it takes a while to build it but it's just it was seen as something so new and progressive I'm guessing young Asimov probably used the 1930s style of art deco in how he probably saw this galactic empire because like for example with 2001 a space odyssey there's a retro futuristic aesthetic to it so it only seems natural that something written in the 40s would have a, a retro futuristic 1930s art deco style um, there's also elements of like ancient Rome in there and that is because the whole idea of the foundation was brought about with Asimov's fascination with the, the fall of the Roman Empire. You could see the galactic empire's fall as a mirror of what happened to Rome. And then we also see that sort of reflected in how the the empire is ran. You've got these very sort of powerful men at the fore who almost like there there is i don't know whether i should spoil this but in the second episode there's like a an ex a public execution i mean for a mo moment it looks like in ancient rome with like the, the gladiator amphitheater and things like that and yeah it's all very just evocative of that so like these these allusions to the source material through the set design is really quite cool um there's also other things like it, it's kind of ironic how the foundation was like a seminal work of science fiction it inspired lots after it but because they're only now adapting it those things that have come before it like for example blade runner it looks like it's a rehash of that style which is quite interesting on oh, another thing that could have inspired the 1930s deco look was metropolis by fritz lang like that's also quite plausible because that was i think that was in like 1925 and it still influences people today despite being a a black and white silent movie it's kind of crazy and there's also another moment that kind of looks like it was a, a nod towards something else in science fiction and that was gal dornick's um i don't know whether it was a hotel room or her apartment it just seemed very similar to motoko's apartment in ghost in the shell like the shot of the the window and the expanse of the city it just reminded me of the scene where she wakes up and i thought that was quite cool but again like it foundation should be pushing the boundaries it shouldn't be sort of settling for replicating imagery because it was the thing that pushed the boundaries to begin with so then for it to become sort of derivative of newer media i don't know like that kind of bothered me in a way but it does look spectacular you can tell that they put a lot of money into it and a lot of thought into how it should look and it is cool like i think that's one of the strongest points of the show is how beautiful it looks oh yeah and the other thing the thing that reminded me of blade runner as well is when gal meets harry selden his office almost reminded me of tyrell's office the the angular and the way like the lighting was sort of uh triangles and sort of very concrete 
brutalist architecture. It just felt quite evocative of like the moment where the moment where Deckard meets Rachel, it, which is perhaps one of my f- most favourite scenes in a movie. So it just I don't know. It felt very evocative of that. I think the cast is cool. When I heard that Jared Harris was going to be Harry Seldon, I was just like, yeah, that is that is genius casting really like he does sort of fit the role but was it was it a bit too obvious who knows maybe but i think um the other strongest player in the show so far has to be um lee pace as like the middle emperor emperor day i think his name is or empire day or brother day what was it i don't know but yeah and like that whole thing is completely invented like the younger emperor the middle aged emperor and then the elder emperor um because the books actually don't show the downfall they they sort of they jump a lot in time which is perhaps why this show has to be a lot different to the source material because let's face it nobody's really going to want to watch a show where you don't really get invested in characters because that's what foundation is all about it's about progress and it's about ideas essentially most of what happens in in the book is just a bunch of men sitting in rooms talking about stuff that wouldn't really make for good television so what they've done is they've just kind of i mean i guess it's it's in the same way as humans share like 60 percent dna with a banana or something we're completely different but there's a lot of similarities apparently so the show's basically the banana of that equation and humans are the book, who knows? I don't know where I'm going with that, but you might get my point. But yeah, so they've had to change a lot. So the idea of a genetic dynasty where there's three different emperors who are all the same and have been cloned through, I think it's like 500 years, 400 years. I think that's fascinating, really. And potentially is ripe for storytelling. I think at the moment, that's what I'm most intrigued about with the show is what that's all about and where they could potentially take it. But yeah, so I I think Lee Pace, I mean, he's always really great in performances. Like, for example, I don't know whether anyone's ever watched it, but Halt and Catch Fire, which is like set in the 80s and it's all about like the rise of the personal computer, but that's a really great show. And also Pushing Daisies is amazing. Yeah, I think he's quite interesting and I hope he stays in it for as long as it serves the story. But generally with the book, I think you meet the Emperor once and then suddenly you don't see him ever again which I think that would polarise people. Like, people like their television to be very character-driven. That's why Game of Thrones was a massive success when it was good. Because people like complex characters that have flaws and that you journey with them. Whereas Foundation, the book, you, you may see a character for a chapter and then you'll never see them again. Which is fascinating because Gal Dornick, you see him very briefly but they've obviously changed that and thought let's obviously switch gender because there's i don't think so far from what i I read this a couple of months ago i don't think there was any female characters in it so again that wouldn't really work for modern television and they've, they've also cast diversely but to be honest foundation wasn't necessarily about race but it was because we're so far in the future where genetics from different races probably has intermingled to a point where most people are going to be mixed race to the point that it's hard to distinguish races and i think it's mentioned that people have forgotten about Earth as well and like the origins of humanity, which is quite fascinating. And I wonder if that will be discussed in the show or not. Um, oh God, I'm starting to ramble. But yeah, like I think it's interesting that they've sort of expanded Gal Dornick. I don't know where they're going with that. I don't know whether they're going to sort of make it into, I don't know, like expand the role too much. Like almost as if, she's like the new Harry Seldon and will lead humanity and I don't know I don't know whether I want that to happen I think they do need to sort of stick kind of to the books as well with the the time jumps but to do it cleverly like with the genetic dynasty they've made that possible that the emperor could last for quite a while the fact that there's a robot in it as well 
could mean that that character stays with us for quite a while as well. And also, like, a subtle hint to Asimov's robot series. Although I've never actually read any of the robot stories. Like, I've got, got loads of them, but I haven't actually delved into the robot stuff yet. So maybe I will soon as well, just to see it reference this robot war and that humanity destroyed robots. So I wonder if that is something in Asimov's books or whether they just completely made that up. Another thing they've completely made up is like sort of all the action but again people expect explosions and crescendos and some sort of action whereas as I aptly said men sit in a room discussing stuff isn't going to be exciting TV and for the most part I was entertained by it and I was okay with the action. The one thing I wasn't really okay with was the sort of predictable romance. Like, I knew that Gail and the dude, I can't remember his name, because he's a completely made up character. Like, when she said that he was cute, I just knew, oh right, they're gonna suddenly get together and it's gonna not have much backstory. And lo and behold, in the second episode, they're suddenly together in love, having a baby. So that was a bit like, I don't know. They, they didn't navigate the very small time jump very well, so that kind of makes me think, are they going to be able to navigate the larger time jumps? But yeah, overall, I think it looks great. I think the story... Like, the first episode was really good, and I really enjoyed it. The second episode wasn't as good, but I did enjoy the whole, I don't know, like, very sort of cartoonish tyrant emperor, and the fact that he, like did a mass genocide on two planets it's probably going to speed up the the end of the empire bit of a stupid move but if you haven't read the books then you're not you might find it a bit confusing in the first episode there's a lot of exposition that is just thrown at you and so it might be a bit jarring but I think it's a hard one. I think diehard fans are going to be disappointed but I can't really call myself a diehard fan because I've only read the first book and to be honest I'm not really that precious with adaptations because film and TV which pretty much is the same thing now like some TV shows look just as good sometimes better than movies so cinematic content is a totally different medium to books so to make this a success they've had to change some stuff because Asimov like I said earlier was writing in the 40s the world is different now certain things have progressed like gender politics racial politics and technology so certain things have had to be changed for it to be believable this is thousands of years in the future and they've had to change some of the dna of the book to make it more exciting to engage an audience that expects high stakes epic imagery like when you think of sci-fi you think of like i mean perhaps you think of 2001 a space odyssey perhaps you think of things like the expanse and then more recently for all mankind so you expect spectacle and i think they they did that well i'm intrigued what they do next but i hope they do make the foundation more interesting like I was more entertained by the idea of the fall of the Empire rather than the the mission to save human knowledge. I think the discussion about how the Foundation should work was quite interesting, like the idea that these people get to decide what parts of human history future generations will remember. And there was like this thing about counting systems, that there's different ones. Who decides what one they keep? And then that, that also, I guess, fits in nicely with a, a more modern conversation around colonialism and how some parts of some countries have had their culture erased because of colonialism and then the idea of a foundation is to pr preserve culture should there be people gatekeeping what is kept but realistically you can't keep everything so i thought that was a fascinating argument but yeah i guess this is another ramble review sorry i just don't think coherently i don't really know what else to say um yeah go watch it maybe i think it could be great but i don't know at the moment like again it's like i was saying it's hard to tell with only two episodes but the fact that it kind of was episode one and then episode two kind of i don't know doesn't bode well but hopefully like I mean, I guess a lot of series, when they first start, it it has to find its footing. So maybe it'll get better again. But I mean, I'm intrigued. I will continue watching, just potentially out of curiosity and just to see the performances and see what they do with the characters, how they potentially navigate the time jumps. Thanks for watching. 
and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.